In this video, I'm going to show you two examples of how we find limits involving trigonometric functions. In the previous video, we proved that the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. But at this point, I would like you to memorize that fact, and we're going to use that to find the limits of other trigonometric functions. First of all, notice that direct substitution won't work. If I substitute 0 for x, I'm going to have a 0 denominator, and that is undefined. So instead, I'm going to try to use this fact. I'm going to see if I can rewrite the tangent of x over x so that I can find sine x over x in there somewhere. So the first thing I'm going to try is I know that tangent x is the same thing as sine x over cosine x. So I'm just going to make that substitution. So if I have the limit as x approaches 0 of, so instead of tangent, I'm going to write sine x over cosine x. Now, you might as well learn the following shortcut right now because it comes up a lot. Say if you have a fraction and you want to divide that by a third thing. All that's going to happen is the extra number you're dividing by is going to end up in the denominator of your fraction. So if I have a over b divided by c, that's going to simply end up as a over b times c. The thing you're dividing by it will simply end up in the denominator. So that's what's about to happen right now. This x is just going to end up in the denominator. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over cosine x, but I'm going to have an extra x in the denominator right here. So already I'm starting to get really interested because look at this part of the problem right here. Can you see that already I have sine x over x? So I'm just going to separate this out. So I'll have my sine x over x and I'll just pull the cosine off to the side somehow. See if you can follow this. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0 of, so here's my sine x over x that I just highlighted. But uh, this will be times 1 over cosine x. All right, so the cosine is still in the denominator but I separated this into a product. Now we've learned that when you have the limit of a product, you can take the limit of each part separately and then multiply. So we can do the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine x. Now, this first part is what we were shooting for, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. We have memorized that that limit is equal to 1. So this is just going to be 1 times. Now, we can do the other limit by direct substitution. If I substitute 0 in for x, then that's just going to give me 1 over the cosine of 0. So what is the cosine of 0? Let's just think about that for 10 seconds. Here's a unit circle. And cosine of 0. So 0 degrees or 0 radians would be right here. The cosine on the unit circle is always the x value. This is the point 1, 0. So the cosine is 1. 
All right, so the cosine of zero is one, so that means this expression is going to become one times one over one, which of course is just one. So all of that is to say the limit of tangent x divided by x as x approaches zero is one. You know what, I think we should go ahead and add this to our list of things to memorize. So the limit of tangent x over x as x approaches zero equals one. Let's go ahead and memorize that so we can use it uh, to prove other trigonometric limits. For example two, we are going to find the limit of sine four x over x as x approaches zero. So we're gonna lean heavily on the fact that the limit of sine x over x as x approaches zero equals one, something that we have memorized. Now, this problem is pretty close to this memorized fact. Uh, the only difference is instead of having sine x, we have sine four x. Well, if we had a four also in the denominator, it would still fit the pattern. We would have the sine of something divided by that same something, the same pattern that we know the limit of. So the question is, how can I get a four in the denominator without actually changing the value of the problem? So the bottom line is, I'm going to multiply by one. I think you'll agree that if I were to multiply by four over one, and at the same time, multiply by one over four. These fours would actually cancel each other out. Uh, this really makes a value of one, so I'm multiplying by one, which changes nothing. However, I'm going to take the one fourth and move that to the inside of the limit. We've learned that if you have a constant, if you're multiplying a limit by a constant, it doesn't matter whether the constant is outside the limit or inside the limit. You can put it in either place without changing the value of the limit. So when I recopy this, I'm going to have the limit as x approaches zero of sine four x over x but the blue one fourth is going to multiply inside and the bottom line is that's gonna give me a four right here. Meanwhile, I have my red four over one is going to stay outside like this. Now, you can see that this fits the pattern of sine x over x, but uh, to make it fit more perfectly, let's do a little substitution we're going to let y equal 4x. So if we do that, watch what happens. We're going to have a uh, sine y over y, which definitely fits this pattern now. We're gonna make one other small adjustment here. Uh, before we had the limit as x approaches zero, but uh, now the variable is y, so I'd really love to say the limit as y approaches zero. Uh, take a moment and think about why this is okay. Remember that y is 4x. So if x is approaching zero, uh, well, that means four times zero. So if x is approaching zero, of course, y is also approaching zero and then I still have the red four out in the front. But we know that the limit of sine y over y as y approaches zero is one. That's the same fact up here that we have memorized um, just with a different variable. So everything here in yellow is going to become one. And then we still have the four out front and that is just multiplying. So we just have four times one, which of course is four. And that is the final answer. So the limit of sine four x over x as x approaches zero 
is simply 4.